Hi all. So today's today we are going to discuss about data dictionary, R3 data dictionary. Till yesterday we discussed about the different types of uh, programs in SAP, work processes, its type, components, open SQL, native SQL, okay, client table, uh, client dependent table, client independent table. So now we are going to see in the system about all those client dependent table, independent tables because those are all part of data dictionary. Okay, so let's uh, let me rewind once about the client part. Whenever discussing, I think I didn't give you much insight about this client. I just said that this is a number of records. It depicts a num set of records in the uh, what you call in the present in the database. But actually, what happens? Let's say there is a organization. Okay, and uh, it has its uh, branches in. Uh, what do you call it has its branches in uh, different cities and different places okay so it's uh, in uh, delhi it's in bangalore it has branch in delhi okay it has branch in bangalore or bengaluru whatever you prefer to call it then in hyderabad then in kolkata or pune okay Kolkata, then Mumbai. So let's take example of Flipkart or Walmart or any other big organization or having very <laughs> lot of reach in these cities. Okay, so they are doing day in day out transactions daily. So when we say client, log on client, we see here this is nothing but your a business entity. Client depicts generally a business entity in SAP stuff. Okay, and uh, what happens? The records present in the table level for each client. So there has to, be, there will be only one database. Doesn't matter your irrespective of your server and irrespective of your how many presentation server you have or location you are. The database for all these transactions will be only one. So only single source of truth will be there, right? So that we already established in our R3 uh, architecture discussion. So the thing is, whatever, how to recognize which transaction is happening as which client site, okay? So this is business unit in Delhi. I have a business unit in Bangalore. I have a business unit in Hyderabad. So what will happen? So in Delhi, I will ask users to log in with the client 100, okay? And then in Bangalore, I will, I will ask them to log in with 200. And then I will ask them to log in with 300. So this is how the configuration will be done. When, when first time I will be deploying SAP in my organization, I will request the consultant to configure these clients, these business entities, these business units in my system, okay, based on location. Okay, so that's how I will identify the records in the database or the transaction which will get saved. As I told you in OpenSQL, it's uh, we discussed the benefits of OpenSQL, right? Automatic client handling. That means whatever the client you are logged in with, it will save and create data or read data from for that client only automatically from the database table. So that is the reason what will happen that to all the users who are logged in in Delhi with client 100, and they will uh, whatever the transaction they will do entire day it will save the data with the client 100 automatically in the database so let's say purchase order sales order whatever gets created at my daily plant so all will happen day in day out at that place only okay or with that client only okay similarly for bangalore so that's how we can identify uh, or uh, segregate the records so a client is nothing but your business entity you can say a unit Okay, so let's come back to the data dictionary we were discussing about tables, right? So data dictionary, the most famous transaction for data dictionary is, I think we have 800 client here. SE11, remember this transaction by heart, okay? From SE80 also you can go, but we are going to go via SE11. I will show you how to navigate via SE80 as well, okay? So gen usually what we do in SE80 to travel to DDIC objects, data dictionary, a web dictionary shows. So this is a web development workbench, right? So here you have to choose uh, all the development objects. One sec, let me check what was it. Which Generally you can choose a package, the package I we discussed about and that package, you select one package here, give your package and see what are all the 
table. So you see, in this package, somebody has created some dictionary object. If there will be a report, so it will show a report folder as well, and then it will show function model as well, function group as well, all the type of de development objects it will show here. Okay, so somebody has created some database uh, dictionary object. So like this, you can see. Right click here. And you can create new data dictionary database table view table type whatever you see in SC11 transaction on the screen. You see database table view data type type group domain search help lock object everything you can create here also under any pro under any package under data dictionary under dictionary object. So you have to give here package and then right click on the package and you can try creating what kind of object you want to create. You see function group you want to create dictionary object you want to create like that if there is nothing existing in this package let's say you create a new package let's say you want to create a package itself i give a package name let's say i will create my own package and i will do everything in that so i will create a g best pa mm, package package g k g okay g best package let's see if i can create if i'm allowed to create in this system i'll say enter it says package does not exist so there has to be separate transaction also for creating package which i'm not sure so if you're not sure where to create and all sc8 is your uh final uh, destiny you can say okay from there you can navigate to any of the development objects so it is be it is developer workbench okay it's it's a web development workbench so from here you can have all the tools possible for all the kind of development so if you don't so i want to create yes and to create a package so let's say i will give test package for above training okay so it's a development package and so you see here there are many different different types of main package structure package development package if you do some r d about the package development you'll get to know so generally there are two types of development i will just brief you one is the uh, uh, custom development and one is package development i think these are the two types of development and all the those java and all those things where you develop everything in scratch and every platform entire platform you design yourself so those comes under custom development and in sap whatever the development we do comes under package development and all moves via something called packages okay so there is something called main package development package structure package so this is completely different terminology which um, i am a little bit aware of not that much but i can dig deep in that or google or whatever okay so or you can do that as well so i will create one package okay and it will again ask you for a workbench request why as i told you we need a courier number right you remember uh, awb number that uh, blue dot gives us right so blue dot is a courier that package we are creating that is a courier but we have to export this courier to other systems as well so that after development comes quality then comes production so those system will also know that this package exists in the system and next time whatever the object coming in under this package they will accept it otherwise if this package does not exist in those system it will dump it will give you error while transporting for sure okay so somebody has created this i don't want that i want to create my own transport request okay test tr4 ABAP. Okay, let's save it. So this is my TR got created, and I can separately create TR in SC01 transaction or SC02. I think those are the transaction. They where I can create these transport keys, and then I can bring that key and paste it here, and then click OK. Those either of the two methods you can do. So I told you, as I told you that day, whatever you create, if you try to save it in a package, it will ask you for a TR right transport request if you do local object it won't ask you and you cannot export it anywhere so now we have package inside that package i can create a database table or dictionary object to functional group programs whatever i want i can create here okay all the development objects are listed here you see all the types of development object and there inside we have variety of their uh, segregations are there okay so this is a uh, top down approach actually so first we are creating package then we are creating uh, database table then we will create uh, inside that we will create fields and inside that we will create data elements then we create domains so that is top down element uh, approach so what i will do i will let it be and i will close this from here you saw how to create so once you will go there so i will come to this se11 from here we will create okay it's the same once you will go to create a screen it will open you the same uh, type of once you click the create button here it will open the similar kind of screen as it would have opened in se80 
Okay, so we are in the SE11 transaction code now. You see here, you can see always see the details here. Guys, remember sometimes it gets minimized and people get confused with their data. Okay, so this is here. Just click on this arrow. Okay, just expand it. Now you see here SE11 is the transaction code. So these are all the variety of database objects that you can see data dictionary objects that we we are seeing here. So what is data dictionary object actually? It is a utility for defining the data object. That means like uh, within the uh, R3 system like uh, data dictionary will exist only within the R3 system. That means on your front end you can say or your presentation application layer it will exist. Okay. But in the back end actual database table will be there. Okay, in the database where the corresponding to the tables that we create or the objects we create here, a actual uh, objects gets created in the database itself. Okay, to hold the actual data, and this is this is just like a wrap around a wrapper around that data uh, database object, whatever we have in database table, it is a wrapper around that. Okay, so let's first understand two things. Uh, types of data because we are talking about storing the data here uh, in terms of table especially so sp storing the data so we are going to talk about types of data okay there are two types of data actually one is uh, so generally we ho hold the uh, what kind of data here application data we will talk about something called application data there are different types of data uh, we will talk about uh, application data uh, let me first note those down here, okay edit text application data it has two category one is master and one is transaction master data and transactional data then we have something called customizing data Customizing data okay so this is done for like uh, customizing the sap system to your need like let's say i have to configure countries which all country my business is there so i have to configure all those countries in, in my sap system in my r3 system i have to define that so those all data are saved in and those all data are called customizing data the data which is needed to customize sap system to your local need to meet the client's requirement okay to meet the customer's requirement the customer who has purchased sap to meet there so those kind of data is known as customizing data okay so that's what i wanted to explain and uh, what does customizing data do example of it like country i told you countries places location okay all those sort of things we uh, like save in uh, customizing uh, tables uh, sorry customizing uh, those data those kind of data are called customizing uh, data and these kind of data are mostly saved in pool tables okay table pool or pool tables we will talk about we will talk about that i will explain that okay so uh okay uh one sec so what will happen and what is application data application data is uh, nothing but uh, the data that we generally usually see in for needed for day out day in day out transactions okay so it has it has two types one is master data and transactional data master data is something that rarely changes just like you shop on flipkart so flipkart has an erp of its own it will save your data records right your name your email id your phone number your address your card number card details if you want to save there so they will save that as well so those are all your master record which you don't change daily in every transaction you do let's say you buy five times in a year or five times in a month or in a week from flipkart or amazon okay but do you change these things shipping address billing address rarely very rarely depending on the record you don't change that or you generally add new address or whatever right but you rarely change the existing ones so those are master data which is master detail so in sap there is something called vendor master record customer master record material master so this there are different tables to store that okay so th that is application data uh, there is a part sort of application data another sort of application data is transactional data so you are doing daily transactions so you create a sales order purchase, purchase orders get created invoice get created when you do a transaction on flipkart or amazon right so the data in that what item you have purchased quantity its price the gst number whatever is there those are all transactional data which keeps changing in every transaction it keeps changing right the mode of payment the amount of uh, money you have paid 
right so those are all transactional data so those are again saved in another another table okay so these are all application data this is saved in something called a table uh, which are uh, called uh, sorry uh we discussed about pool tables save the which save the customizing data and then we have something called transparent tables okay in sap we have three types of tables so we were discussing about data so i discussed here itself actually and we don't need this uh, we, i will make it for tables okay edit text i will give a transparent table transparent table and then we have something called pool tables pool tables and i will tell you what is table pool there is a difference between pool table and uh, table pool okay so just mind that difference okay table pool and then we have something called number 3 three. three types of uh, like uh, data dictionary tables we have in sap third one is cluster tables and table cluster okay so we have three types of tables so what we are discussing currently in sap learn screen our first option that is database tables we are going, we are discussing we will go one by one each of these and what is the use of these all okay and these buttons you know as usual this is syntax check if any error is there or not if uh, in your while well, you give the name of the table and try to activate it so activate what it will do in this case i will again explain what save and activate will do then where use list of this particular this i am not sure what it does in environment analysis you can check okay. this is for online manual this is for deleting this creating replica of replica of the table copying the table with other name or any dictionary object whatever the radio button you have selected here and given the name it will copy that one or delete that one that application will be applicable to what where the radio button is okay we'll try to act activate right now it will say object or miss name missing you have to give a name right to activate so database tables we are discussing currently we will discuss about two types of already and the third type is uh, cluster actually cluster tables or table cluster so what are all these things uh, we will see i told you as customizing data all the data which is customer data which is needed to uh, customize the sap according to customers need those are those kind of data are called customizing data and those are saved in pool tables and these are sap proprietary objects these are changed only by sap these are not to be touched by us okay these are maintained changed by sap sap uh, do all the things whatever it wants to do with these tables okay and what happens corresponding to the pool tables in r3 okay so how does as, as i mentioned in the beginning uh, it works as a wrapper around uh, r3 right so what i will do i will show you one thing here only i will do i will maximize make it a little bit larger and let's consider this as a wrapper around a data dictionary uh, around a database table okay so db table okay so i have a db table and db table won't exist till we have not created an sc11 okay in sc11 when we will create any table and as i last time i told whatever we create starts with y or z so we generally we use z so i will give a uh, g employee table let's say g employee okay and i will try to create it i will try to create a table here the employee already exist okay somebody has already created it so g e m p underscore best let's say i will create yep it is creating okay so from here if you'll go other objects i guess okay let me do I'll give some description. Let's see if other object we have option. Development object enhancement option. I think there has to be option here to assign it as a pool table custom table. So whenever you will create any table here, by default it will uh, show you as a transparent table. Okay. So by default you see here it says transparent table. Or let's come out. I won't save it. I will go through all these options. What are these things? Okay. 
so let's check the existing table something okay and you will see it will say always a transparent table here okay so whatever table we create generally in database those will be transparent table so transparent table holds holds application data so what happens when we create it so let's say i created this table okay and here the field in the field column so first of all whenever you will create it will ask you these details delivery class data project etc then it will ask you all the fields you have to give then you have to maintain some technical settings and if you want to make it like manually maintainable so you have to create something called tmg table maintenance generator as well you see here that also you need to do but uh, we are not going to there right now we will go there later so what happens when we save it uh, r3 data dictionary structure gets created a table transparent table gets created okay but in the database there is nothing yet unless you activate it so that's what activate button does so i created this table it's it will be in inactive mode and it won't be visible to any of the user till i activate it and once you activate it either you activate it from that screen or you activate it from this main screen doesn't matter but it will create a corresponding table in the database okay so this g employee you see is a wrapper around a database table with the same name okay so transparent table always has one to one relationship with a table in the database always and always okay so transparent table is in r3 data dictionary a transparent table exists only in r3 data dictionary and it's it acts as a wrapper around the database table uh actual database table and only one table corresponds to one transparent table corresponds to one transparent uh, one transparent table in database okay it's one to one relationship and database table gets created only when you have activated this it generates all the SQL related sql query to access and all so whatever the modification you will do in this transparent table it will get impacted in the this db table as well if you let's say removed some field if you added new fields all those will get added and removed in this database table table automatically in the backend okay in the database level so those we are not going to do anything in the database level we are going to do it at r3 architecture level r3 level we are this data dictionary level we are going to do the changes okay and whatever the data you will save in this transparent table will go and will sit in this database table so it's a wrapper around db table so it's one to one relationship how does pool table work now okay pool table saves your uh and what is table pool okay so we will come to that now so i hope this makes clear what is transparent table and uh, how it is linked to database table it's one to one relationship remember that one to one relationship with the database table transparent table is r3 data dictionary object okay and it has one to one relation with the database table so unique with the exact same field names it exists and unique name whatever we are you have given with the same name it will exist in the database now coming to pool tables pool tables as i told it holds customizing data so there will be a lot of uh, small tables will be there pool tables in uh, r3 dictionary structure and all will be clubbed into one table in the database that is called table pool so here you see uh, here db table was single one to one is there right so what we need to do here let's maximize uh, enlarge it a bit i'll try to make it a little bit bigger here because we have to have multiple pool tables okay so let's insert something like this like this like this okay so in r3 we'll have multiple pool table pool table pool table let's see this is table 1 this is table 2 and this is table 3 so and all these three will be clubbed together and will be stored in one table called table pool so table pool will be nothing but okay i will edit text here table pool and this will be the combination of all these three 
data in these three tables. So these will be three small tables, let's say not only three, it can be n number of tables. There will be n number of tables, small tables. Remember this because we'll come to cluster table where there will be less number of tables clubbed together into one table cluster. Okay. So cluster tables are the tables in the R3 dictionary, data dictionary, which are clubbed together and stored in something called table cluster in the database. Okay, one table cluster. So it will be have same architecture, but here less number of large tables will be there. Those tables will hold large amount of data. And here it's opposite, a little bit opposite. Similar structure, but more number of tables with less number of data. Okay, let's say it has 10 entries, it has 20 entries, it has 50 entries. And here only two tables will be there with 1000 entries, 1500 entries like that. Okay, so in cluster table, it, it's in that kind of difference in the architecture. Okay, so similarly, I will just uh, control C and what I will do, I will delete this and I will control Z. Okay, I think I think I can copy. and put it as cluster. What's the difference we will see in cluster table and pool tables? Cluster, cluster and cluster. Okay, so I hope it, this diagram explains what this, I think this outside we don't need outside object we don't need that okay so mm -hmm. so this we can linking this way this way you can do the linking so here oh, in pool tables th it holds customizing data and it has small uh, large number of small tables and here we have small number of large tables okay collected to one table cluster so table cluster and table pool okay these are this all exist in actually in database and in r3 what you will see you will see the pool tables okay so let's google a bit here i'm also a little bit tight on memory on this one what actually uh, this holds so mm, let's see pool versus cluster table in SAP. So, basically day in day out you will be using uh, only transparent tables, which is the main. So, pool cl and cluster will basically use to store application. No? The main difference in pool and cluster table, a table pool corresponds to a table in the database. This is really confusing because as far as I know, we have transparent table to hold the application data. This might be wrong. I am very much sure that pool table holds customizing data. Examples of pool cluster, difference between pool cluster, let's say. So, what it says, or images. other dictionary object okay from here you can go and create i believe we will see that so what is pool and cluster table you say somebody has explained it here some kind of link is given let it be and SAP we can see so here you see examples of cluster table bsec bsc these are very large table this contains your documents actually bsec table and bsc tables this whole lot of documents actually document related data okay should be accessed via primary key okay pool tables are always accessed via primary key or should be buffered no secondary indexes available in this one we will come to that what is the indexes okay indexing we will see and here also is this and should be accessed via primary key very far ret very fast retrieval otherwise very slow okay cluster table i am little bit not sure so here also many to one as I told you 
one to one in transparent table then pooled and clustered are main to one relationship with the database and uh, these are all example of pool tables you can see m underscore mtv blah 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 and these are all example of cluster tables okay so cl comma corresponding to three four cluster tables there will be one table cluster in the database okay so that is the different those are the difference once you will uh, dig in a bit you will get to know many things about on the differences between these two so generally day in day out we use several logical tables in ff4 dictionary pool tables are logical tables that must be assigned to a table pool when they are defined cluster table or logical tables that must be assigned to table cluster when they are defined and cluster tables can be used to store control data when they also use to store temporary data or text such as documentation okay so documentation you holding documents and also that's why there are big tables like uh, we saw bseg and vsec those tables are very big tables holds lot of records so that is the thing so one more thing is there in between them as uh, far as i remember that in data in uh, cluster tables all the tables which are combined into one cluster all the tables we saw here let's say this 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 all the all these three tables will have one key in common okay these three tables will have uh, one key at least one primary key field in common okay we will discuss about what is primary key primary key i hope you might all might be knowing that primary key is a, a combination of field or a single field which is used to identify the uh, record uniquely in the table okay let's say i have here uh, let's delete this these are not needed so let's say employee name i have a employee table where i have employee number then employee name and then we have phone number and we have some address something some data is there okay so which record will identify you uniquely okay it will be employee number name can be same it can be rajesh for you rajesh for me as well okay phone can phone cannot be same but sometimes people don't have phone or this might happen okay so that might be the case so that is the reason we need a combination of fields sometimes here employee number is a unique field and it is a unique key field for this particular record right but in some cases where we don't have much uh, let's say for uh what do you call one uh, order you are placing let's say right yeah, on flip card so when you place a order you will see a order number something called order number right order number gets generated then you will have uh, like a uh, uh, item number then you will have item which item you have ordered then you will have quantity let's say these all fields will you will see right in somewhere this transactional data will get saved so this order number let's say it's xyz so you have ordered uh, let's say a uh, video game or something or a new uh, movie cd or something you have ordered so let's say a1 you have ordered item then you have ordered item sorry item a1 then you have ordered item b1 as well okay and this is two quantity this is five quantity you have ordered four quantity you have ordered so it is it was done in the same transaction so same order and order number it will carry right and then what will happen item number will change here in the serial number you see order number one order number two will be there like that so here how to identify a record uniquely right so the combination of this order number and item number you see this is a unique combination x y z and 1 x y z and 2 so x y z and 1 this combination doesn't exist in this table anymore right so if you go to another order order number itself will change then but for same order number if we have multiple items there so how to identify along with item so this combination is primary key for that table okay the combination of the fields which uniquely identify the records in that table is called the field or the combination of the field as in employee case we saw employee number was enough in your organization you, where you might be working with you just ask you just give them employee number and they will give you all the details related to you right so that is the reason here and that is a single field 
that is employee number is primary key here we need two because we have header data and item data so, so order number is the header data here and this item number is the item level data so to fetch item level data we need two key order number we need and which particular item you want to want the detail for so we need two things so these two are uniquely identifying the record in the table so hence order number and item number is the primary key for this okay so the thing is in case of uh, cluster table cluster tables what happens that primary key at least one of the primary key of all the tables matches in the database as well it exists in database also let's say there is a field 1 field 2 field 3 here it will be field 1 will be there field 4 field 5 will be there here field 1 will be there field 7 field 8 will be there and all field 1 will be here as well in this table as well okay so the name should match okay the table must have at least one primary key field in common and the tables are usually all read at the same time this is somewhere I read on the internet okay so just ignore it or not no, if you can remember then it's fine so let's not dig into this because we are not going to use it much pool and you just you wanted to know because this is the interview question they will ask what are all the types of object and give some example of pool table cluster table and what is the difference between pool and cluster I hope the difference is a bit clear here we don't have that constraint of having primary key common it ha it can have field f123 if it can have f546 it can have any f f n number of fields and those can be here those fields can be here or can or may not be here as well okay with the same name name might not be same it might have stored in a different way with different name okay so that is the difference one difference another difference that it has it holds n number of tables small small tables many small tables okay it holds many is very less number of large tables so that is one of the difference okay it holds customizing data the data which is customized customized for the particular client and which is to meet SAP you know, like to meet the need of the customer okay and in cluster table what kind of data I think mainly documentation related data we say BSEG and uh, those tables are there where documents get saved okay so now let's go back to our dictionary part so we saw utilities there was something called other dictionary object if you click on that see table pool and cluster pool it's showing you option to create so pool table or cluster table so you have to you can create pool table cluster table and you can assign it here so we are not going to create that view you in your career I don't think you will need this ever but you should know from interview perspective okay so let's see here uh, let's get back to our topic on table creation okay so I will walk you through one by one so then we have something called view so view there are different types of view projection view then uh, uh, what you call database view mm, let's google types of views in SAP types of views in SAP data dictionary data dictionary okay So views are nothing but uh, wrap around those data dictionary tables which we have created, okay? And it clubs multiple table and shows you output. So those are views. So if I want data from the, uh, this table, uh, I have let's say multiple tables. I have here order detail table, right? And there is something called employee master table. Mm, uh, not customer master table, let's say I have. Okay, I will show you a very good example of view. Let's move it a bit what we need here actually for us it is like this but for them for Flipkart let's say there will be customer number as well right because without customer number how they will link that uh, order number to that customer so this customer number and order number has to have a linkage okay so let's say customer uh, best one that is the number they have given or customer ID some ID they have given and then then there will be best to customer and then it's their order detail right and then their order item detail so for best one again there can be another sorry okay there can be another order as well ABC 
order number ABC. Let's say he has ordered this, then order date will be there and all the stuff. Let's say this year is ordered in January, this year is ordered in February, something like that. And item number again one and item number two, two items he ordered, or he might be three. Then there will be another user itself. So this combination will be now unique primary key for this, right? So this is how Flipkart or Amazon will identify, right? That this is a uh, this is the order for this guy and he has ordered this item this quantity and this is the price for each quantity blah 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 right now coming to there will be a customer master table where customer number will be the primary key customer number then we will have name then we will have all customer master details that means address contact let's say phone number these three are mainly and phone and email email definitely email is needed right so these are all the customer related data so here best one will be saved best one sorry then name will be best phone number will be blah 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 okay similarly best two will be saved now what i want let's say best two is the customer and name is something and phone number name is let's say same there can be two rajas in the system right Okay, so name or let's let's I will make it best and test. Okay, so we have two customers now. So what I want here, let's say test also I will give. Test also plays the similar order. Okay, so but its username is best two. Best two. Okay, order number will be let's say ZXYZ. Order number will be definitely will be he also ordered let's say different same item, same quantity, whatever. Right? Something you give. Some name of the item I have given. Just to look table table should look good, that's all. Okay. So now coming to that, I wa what I want, I want to see the data from this table. Okay, from both the table, I want the data of customer da one data table. I want to generate in which I will have the data from customer num customer orders and customer master as well. It should have all the just like the invoice we get, right? The invoice will have our details. Invoice will have. Uh, the seller's detail invoice will have, have our all items detail whatever order detail whatever we have done whatever we have transacted around right so what will happen do you think that we are going to create another database table which will hold all this data that is very wrong that is a data redundancy right it's not what sap is about sap is all about reducing that load on the database uh, reducing that redundancy of the data okay so they have come up with a concept of something called views so in view what we can do we can view is you can say projection of table okay how to depict the data from the table table is holding tra our transparent tables are holding the data all the application data it is holding in it and how we want to display it how we want to view it actually that's view okay so based on that how we are going to project that we have several types of view uh, something called there are mainly four types of view one is database view one is projection view one is maintenance view and one is help views so just to brief you database view as i want as i told you like from these two we want uh, one table so what i will do i will create a view in which i will fetch data from this uh, order detail table and customer master table i will give and we will join you have to join the table on some fields common fields which you have so here common field is customer number i will pick best one from here and its detail will get picked automatically and then i will pick best from the wherever the best one is here and then it will automatically match that and it will give me the data uh entire data all the columns will appear in the output whatever i want so i can design that in the view okay then we have something called uh, projection views projection view we hide and uh, like show some fields let's say in a table i don't want to see all the Fields. Let's say there is a table called Mara table which has almost 300 fields as, I, as far as I know. Okay, but customer doesn't want that. So we will create a view called projection view where we will limit the number of fields. We will hide many fields and they will just see. So this is how we want to see the data, right? You see 265 fields it has here, right? And you can extend this, you can enhance this 
so there can be multiple fields also more fields as well so that is projection view then maintenance view like to maintain the data that i talked about table maintenance generator and all where we will user will be able to enter the data and save it directly in the database so we can have maintenance view as well that also we will see later then we have help views i think it is for uh, for helps and all so those views we will go in detail okay so let's understand each object on this first what do we have here right then we will go one by one creation of these things then we have something called data type data type here actually is all about let's say i will give you one i will show you what all all things will pop up let's say i will give something i will try to create you see it is asking for three things data element structure and table type what are all these things data element we will see later structure table type so structure is a skeleton okay just now we saw a table mara table let's say right you see this is structure this is like it it holds a uh, n number of fields here right and if you see let me double click on this one e mara i'll show you what is structure hey e mara is a structure what they have done while creating table i needed let's say here let's go to our example okay so let's say in this table itself what uh, flipkart planned that no i am not going to have this uh, uh, customer uh, number table and this in the no, we are not going to club these two to create a view all details i want to save in this table itself so this name and phone number field you have to include here right so here you have to give name here you have to give phone number and wherever the customer is best one you have to give this so this will be data redundancy obviously but let's say clients want that so what we can do client always come up with the weird requirements okay you never know one of the most weirdest possible requirements they will come up with okay so be ready for that so let's say so, so this we have we want we have to add here right so instead of doing that instead of adding the field in this structure what i will do i will include this structure the table structure structure exists only in r3 dictionary it doesn't have anything corresponding to it in the database okay because it doesn't hold any data so it's just a structure it's just a skeleton skeleton that means what fields it holds its property its technical attributes okay like uh, you see just the number of fields there is nothing called key field or uh, whatever so now what i will do there are two tables okay one is order detail table and one is customer master table which needs this uh, structure and there can be address there can be email id and other fields but here in customer uh, in order detail i needed just name and phone number so what i will do customer number name and phone number i will create a separate structure in data dictionary and i will have those two fields those three fields here customer number then i will have i will add one field called customer number here i will add name and here i will add phone number and then while creating the order detail table i will just include that there are two ways include and append both we will discuss while enhancing the uh, enhancing a existing table okay so that we will check our structure so we can uh, nest structure inside structure or structures inside tables we can do that so that's what so what we will do i will just directly include that structure i have created and I, all those fields like just like they have included in emara structure and all the fields which are included in this structure have come up here you see all those fields which are you see in blue are either appended or included okay from other structure so dot include you see that is the like uh, syntax that we follow while including external structure within a table so they have just pulled all the structure they have not added those fields here okay so in future if they will extend this emara structure automatically that field will become a part of this mara table or wherever this emara has been used so let's do a where use list that which all table are using this structure so here you can see where use list functionality comes very handy so we are not going to search in program classes or any application we are going to search in tables or structure database tables or table types where this structure has been used and when we will enhance this or add or remove field from this which all table will get impacted so this will give you the feel of it you see here all this list of table mara mara tmp mara mvra and some g table someone has created 
so GTable you can just identify from here which is a custom created by customer so this is created by someone in the test system and these are all provided by SAP because it starts with Z starting with Y or Z it will be own data own uh, development object all apart from Y or Z will be SAP delivered objects okay so this is the use list of these are all the structure which is using Emara as I told you there is something called nested structure or deep structure you can call it structure within structure okay and these are all the database tables which are making use of this emara so these many things will get impacted when you will make a change to emara similarly we can create our own custom structure and we can assign it you reuse it in the table so structure is creating a structure is all about reusability okay this is all about completely about reusability you don't have to add the n number of fields again and again to uh, same set of say two different tables you just you can reuse those so now if I will have a table which will have employee uh, customer number name and phone number let's say not only order not only order detail table there can be some some kind of notice I want to send to customer some uh, some kind of EMI option he has availed but he is not paying so there also I will need customer name number and phone number to be printed right in that table also I can reuse this structure directly so that is the benefit of creating structure then we saw something called table type and data element so data element we are going to create data element is I will show you what is data element here itself if you will go every field has associated data element with it you see here and sometimes it if data element will not be there then you definitely will see something called data type field will be filled this may be blank this is not mandatory to give here but what is data element actually it holds your a semantic characteristics of that particular field like how long it will be okay and what will be the label for that field you can maintain level you see based on the length it will show you levels uh, created created by how it will appear in the output what name it will pick that field you have given ERNAM that is the technical name but in the output if you user will see ERNAM he will never he or she will never understand what is their name they will understand this created or created by this kind of text right so those are maintained in data element level okay and some there are more things like search help we can assign suppose that you are trying to book a flight right so you pick airport name so drop down appears to pick a airport name so that is search help right so that we can assign in the data element level okay then we can make it uh, that's where we can log the changes here anything any changes happens to the data element you can log it so you can do that in this you can capture those kind of things then we have something called domain so domain is the last building block of any data dictionary object okay so domain is the final destination you can say you cannot go below domain below domain all are standard so domain till domain you can is something that you can create so you see domain is there is something called domain it's a dictionary object which holds all the te technical attribute technical of uh, characteristic right I, will it allow uh, uppercase or lowercase or not will it allow sign that is minus or uh, minus sign plus sign those things or not so those these are those check boxes then what will be its length which type of uh, things it will hold it will hold characteristic uh, character strings okay so it that means it can be alphanumeric character means alphanumeric in SAP not only ABCD it means alphanumeric then how much can be its length it can be of 12 length 12 then value range you see here I can give the value range as I told in data element level we can assign uh, that uh, search help right instead of search help we have assigned if we have assigned domain and if domain has a value table associated with it from that table you can assign any transparent table here okay and it will pick value from that table automatically or you can assign a range let's say you want to give a range on the screen for age and you don't want uh, the user to be more than uh, 70 years of age so you can put a lower limit of let's say 18 he must be adult up to age of 17 so you can put a lower limit 18 and upper limit at 70 here and that's done whenever user try to enter any value apart from this it will throw error automatically that will be handled by SAP or if you want to select from fixed set of values so you can maintain it here let's say you are giving a drop down for uh, some cities okay so capital cities of uh, all, all the states in India let's say so you can maintain those here and it will appear automatically as a value help there okay so these are all domain level you can fix the value range as well 
and in data in a data element level you have to do it via search help you can give a search help as well. so what is the difference between domain and data element in data element we are going to maintain the level or its um, main characteristics those we are going to see once we will create that okay we will create that so i'm just briefing you about all the options on the screen now type group type group is uh, something that we create for like once we will start creating reports and all we will see this type group as well okay let's l put it on hold for now domain we already discussed that search help we already discussed a little bit about inside data element that we assign it there and we assign it at table level as well and search help you will see there is a tab called entry search help something like that you see here entry help check you can assign check table here or search help i think uh, check table for check yeah search help you see here search help they have assigned so these are all search help which is uh, it's uh, which in itself is a dictionary object and there we have lot of values and search help exit we can assign here for enhancement any kind of enhancement you want to do in the standard one you can assign there. those all we will cover i hope uh, let's say lock object again this is that in q and dq that, that we discussed about to update in table before that we put a lock on it so lock objects we create here okay so these are all the options here so coming to the so there are two things top down and bottom up approach once you can go here and let's say you try to create let, let's say gmar and i will say create gmar already exist okay what we gave at the time gmp underscore best something right z e m p underscore best and just click on create now give employee data and now coming to delivery class okay so what does delivery class mean delivery class means i believe that what kind of data it will hold yes so if it's a application table you will choose so it will hold all application type data if you choose customizing table maintain only by custom it will hold customizing data which can be directly maintained right and similarly all other type of uh, things are there which we generally don't use. we either use a or c most likely these two we use okay so we are going to go for application table we will hold some master data or transactional data and then this option data browse table view maintenance so it uh, it restricts the maintenance of data in the table right so sometimes you will see there will be we will see something called table maintenance generator once we generate that it will give a maintenance view to the user to maintain the dire data directly into table okay so that access this is the place where we assign it to oh, and then if you want those values to be moved from the development to quality to production throughout the all these three systems so you have to lock it into transport request again and if you don't want that then directly it can be maintained production itself without uh, maintaining it in development quality that option is also there so we will do that once we will start with tmg table maintenance generator okay so now we have to define fields here so now comes the concept of client that i discussed in the beginning right so log on client we discussed S client dependent table we saw and client independent as i mentioned earlier any any table which has a field in the beginning okay we of type clnt clnt remember this clnt and this field in short is called mandate okay why it's not working clnt is not active I will save it as local object, or I will give my G based p package I created. P K G. Okay, test tier or same tier I will move. Should be client specific application table. So do you see? It's throwing you error. Not available C L N T. Okay, let's cancel this. M A N D T. Okay, yes. So you see. Oh, this is the standard data type, just like char or numeric or integer. So in SAP also we have those basic data types, 
care numeric integer int4 int1 it's all on the number range based on the number range so those you can easily google it will give you what are all the uh, dif predefined predefined those are called predefined data types available in sap okay so you can string is also pre predefined data type that has no limit it holds all the string characters and it has no limit okay so basically most of the time you'll see care 255 is the maximum limit is used in sap so any table which has a first field as data type as clnt and field name generally will be mandt and mndt will be the data element name and data type will be clnt so such table are client dependent table that means open sql will come into picture and it will save the data by default with the client that you are logged in that is client 800 right now in our case you see client 800 so whatever entry i will create by default it will have 800 as the first column entry as 800 value in it okay and that is always mandatory to add in any application table or client dependent tables okay so that is the thing that we were discussing that day. now coming to i want first field as gmp number employee number so you can give anything abc not starting with g that is not needed i can give emp number also that is fine completely fine i just follow the habit of starting with y or z in sap because it it will help you everywhere all the sap object you're going to develop you're going to use z or y in the beginning and this will be a key field and what is this initial if you see initial values so what will happen that if you check this it will save the it will not leave it blank it will save the initial value in the table if nothing comes up it will save initial value for a numeric field type it is zero for character field type it is space so that kind of value it will fill so initial value generally to make sure that no not a uh, like garbage value gets filled there we put uh, this checkbox checked and this key wherever i am checking those because that combination becomes the primary key for that table now employee name employee name can never be a uh, primary key right so emp name i will put and it cannot be a key and now you see i have to assign a data element now i can give a data element name gmp number and i can create from here so that's top down approach while creating the table i am going down and creating data element and then i am creating a domain from there so that will be top down or another way is i will create first a domain then i will assign that domain to uh, data element and then did that data element I will use it here directly so both way I can do so let's do this top down first and for another one I will do bottom up okay so okay somebody has already created it that is nice now just hold on for a minute So somebody has already created this one so we will create this in the later class then so it is bottom up now so somebody has created already a domain of numeric 10 character and i see if they have assigned the value range no so what i can do i can assign a value range that 0 to 9999 so anyone can maintain only till 999 not more than that employee number cannot exceed that if it will exceed it will throw error if you try to enter more than that so we will use that and we will show you so i have activated error showing a warning because it might have used used more than one place so one domain can you can assign to multiple uh, data elements so now i will show you a little bit difference about domain and uh, data element as you know domain is all about reusability okay and data element as it has label associated with it suppose that you have a airport uh, you go to go abib or any other platform right so there you try to book a uh, flight so you put from airport and then you put to airport right and both have same list of airports right so value is coming from same source so both can have same airport air from and air to this is air to right but both have same set of element so this description air from and air to will be coming from data element level so i can create two data elements okay with the name z air from and in the level i will maintain 
uh, air from okay so this is the best example to understand data element and domain so domain how we are reusing domain in multiple data elements wherever i need so in the domain i created only one domain okay of which has a value range of all the airports in india okay airports i created a g airport domain z airport it has list of all the airports in india now i will associate this to assign this domain to both the data elements okay so what will happen z air from and z air to okay z air to both will pick value from same domain but it its level that we saw in the data element right in the field level you went in here it will say air from and in the other one it will say air to so that's in the data element is is like a front end characteristic and domain is like a back end characteristic of that of that particular attribute okay on the screen whatever you see so that's why what will happen you will see the same list of airport at both the places so you you reused that domain at two places right so similarly you can create several domains for several purposes like age group you create a domain you create a domain of list of all the states in india and you can use the assign that domain to all the elements sometimes they want to see state as a text in the output so you will create a data element with the state in the uh, description field level sometimes they want province not state they want province right so you can put the text you create another data element and put the field level as province and then assign same domain there as well so in the output it will appear as province but the list will remain same so that's how you reuse the domain domain is a technical characteristic in the back end okay and data element is mostly it's a front end thing which appears to the user that's how you you reuse the domain and data element reuse the domain in data elements okay and then once you have data element and domain ready you just apply that data element here employee number and then i will give z emp name let's say name okay that is also there somebody already has created it great so our job is easy so to in the next video we will see creating these things and then assigning it i will add few more fields let's say phone number and email and i will create a, a custom element and domain for that and then we will assign it there so let it be for now till here okay let's save it I believe I will try to activate. I'm not sure if it will activate. It will ask me to maintain technical settings. Let's go to technical setting once. So what this technical setting depicts? Data class. Data class means what actual memory space, which type of memory space will it hold? So which type? Of, if it's a application or master data. So application data. There are two types of application data you can see here, right? Application zero zero one zero zero two. 01 0 sorry 0 1 and 2 right so in the middle one you see something called transactional data so if it hold this table is going to hold transactional data it will have huge number of data so if you are using application 1 it will automatically in the database level it will assign a huge chunk of memory and next time if that memory fills uh, filled with data it will assign another chunk based on the same size whatever you are selecting here so you have to select the kind of data is going to save and based on that it will it is going to show you the size category okay so you see and if i will check here something else let's say master data which is generally less in the less number of master data will be there in the system so size category might change here okay size category value will might change here you have to pick lesser amount of size so whenever you are selecting so don't hesitate in assigning more number of data because what will happen that once it will overflow and database will assign on its own some other memory location then the reading data from this table will become very uh, like huge performance issue might come then we have some concept called buffering db specific property you see we are not going to define the row column based storage these are all hana related property we are not going to discuss this okay so we have something called buffering buffering not allowed buffering allowed buffering switched off and single record type of buffering so if buffering not allowed that means it will never be buffered as we discussed earlier whenever some data is getting pulled from database it gets stored for some time in uh, get buffered in application server so it helps in improving the performance but it comes at a cost of memory so when you assign it at application server some data gets stored it needs memory right so you have your application server becomes heavily loaded 
so you don't want to do that always in a specific table you are going to do that but not always so generally you keep it not allowed and then if it is allowed then you have to choose buffering activated then you have to assign which type of buffering you want single record buffering generic buffering or fully buffered fully buffered means entire table will be buffered on the application server entire table this table will always reside on your application layer okay and the replica from the database okay and it will always keep getting refreshed from time to time and you can pull data it will help in performance but it will uh, make uh, it will cause huge load on your application server so that's why we don't do fully buffered single record buffer means which particular record you have picked that will be buffered and nothing else and only that will get keep refreshing and then generic buffering means a specific field from that records let's say okay so like number of keys how many fields you see generic buffer bu area buffered is associated with number of key fields okay so how many fields you want to buffer and uh, that you have to assign it here so this these are all interview questions okay make sure you go through this in detail because i think i have covered the basic of this and i'm not going to come to this tab again this is enough for like buffering not allowed it will kill the buffering no buffering will happen ever on this table then buffering allowed but switched off you can turn it on later then buffering activated so if you are activating the buffering make sure you select either select single record buffering or generic buffering don't do fully buffer it will cause huge performance issue then we have log data changes in and write, write access only with java that you can ignore that we never use log data changes it has huge advantage actually if you want to log the history who is making changes in this table there are two tables ch uh, dir and there are two tables are there which holds this change directories change all the data changes whatever you're getting to who has changed it when it has been changed what was the old value and what is the new value everything every record is changed it gets logged so don't do that generally it causes memory issue it will it will unnecessarily fill that table if you don't need it okay if you need it it's very important table then you just check it okay let's keep it buffering not allowed and so buffering not allowed has another advantage it is performance issue obviously because you are going to hit database every time you are going to fetch data but it will always give you the accurate data okay there is no lag like if you click from application server it might have old data if application server is not refreshed so this is all done we have saved it we have selected size category let's save it let's come back and then we have to activate as soon as we will activate in the database corresponding table will get created let's see just select and activate it says warning messages let's see if anything with warning message enhance cat enhancement category what is enhancement category that is one last topic in this table creation thing that i would like to walk you through extras enhancement category yeah you see enhancement category in the extra so what is this about you see cannot be enhanced can be enhanced not specified so cannot be in that means in production system live system if customer can enhance this table or not so generally we keep it as cannot be enhanced okay and this copied then activate it so with this we come to an end of how to create a basic transparent table there are a lot of other features like tmg table maintenance generator to create maintenance view and all assigning auth groups those things auth group i don't think we will see but we we'll, i will check if i can do that okay and then you can do you can maintain entries in this table if you want okay from here there should be your table content i believe table content display create entries right create entries option is there i think we why it's not showing up yet so using this you can display the content it will show you all the fields as selection criteria and if you will execute it will give you the entries currently there are no entries so we have to maintain entries in this let's see if we can maintain entries uh there has to be that option why that option is getting grayed out that i'm not able to understand let me go back from here if we can do okay i will check that and get back to you in the next session so let's stop for now it's been over an hour okay so thank you for all your love and all your support and uh, stay with me stay tuned for more free sessions on abap and we are going to complete this course as soon as possible and please do share subscribe and like my channel and which is sfl sap free learner just type on youtube sap free learner you will get my channel with this logo you see here with this logo it will be there i'm not able to 
able to open here YouTube not sure why it's banned in the server or what but do subscribe that and please share with your friends or anyone who is looking for a web training this is completely free course and please do post your comments and feedbacks in the comment section that will help me to improve this session and what all you are looking for or expecting from this training that would be of great help thank you so much have a great day bye bye